So I'm Susan from Kaiser Permanente. Um, I've been with Kaiser for about five and a half years, but before that I was a university professor for about 30 years, so I'm actually a retired uh, professor. And um, so I just love doing the work that I'm doing. Uh, I am a certified worksite wellness specialist, which means that instead of you coming to the medical center to get your health education, I come to you. So if we find out that UCI has a lot of diabetics, you know, maybe Diana Lass can come back and I will do some classes for the diabetics. So this is sort of work that I do, uh, and I'm, I really enjoy it. So this is my second time at UC Irvine, the first time at VR, even, even though I graduated two uh, children from UCI. So it's like, oh, I can you know? I take a So um, I know I'm really fat now. I have one on each side. OK, so what, we have, what I'm presenting today and it's the topic of eat well, be well, but you know, you guys are all eating well, you're all really looking pretty healthy, pretty fit, you know, even Larry tells me that he's been trying to eat well, be fit, you know, he's, he's trying out some new fad diets, you know, but he's trying, at least he's trying, you know. So this is the whole idea of eat well, be well. So I want to ask you, when you look at this uh, picture here, um, how likely is this guy going to be eating well? So, uh, so, you can see, look at, he's got Wi-Fi. <laughs> all right, so, you know, just so much like the rest of us today, we have all this technology around us. We are so advanced. Um, but what is missing in his diet? Fruits, vegetables, vegetables what else? Grains, Grain, dairy. Okay, so it tells me already you're pretty aware of when a diet is deficient. But that's really different from how we eat, right? But anyway, you can tell he's got Wi-Fi, but he might not get his fruits and vegetables. All right, so this, these are some of the things we'll cover today. Uh, we're going to look at how food provides uh, more than calories, a little bit about nutrition and weight. Uh, fast food eating. And I know you all have a fast food guide in front of you, so that's going to be fun. And something you can take home and share with your family and friends. And uh, eat well guidelines and action plans. OK, so the first thing we're going to look at is when we eat, we really need the calories that come in our food. Okay, we need it for um, brain function, and I think many of us forget that um, our brains don't work on caffeine. Okay, in the morning you up those two cups of coffee and you rush out the door. You know that is really not what gets your brain moving. The brain's going to say, "Hey, there's nothing to work on," and then it'll start to pound you in a little while, or it's going to make your stomach growl, make you dizzy, make you irritable. But it's going to tell you that that wasn't the right kind of nutrition to put into your, your system early in the morning. So coffee may be great, but you need something with that coffee. And actually, your brain only prefers one type of nutrients. And we have some nutrients here, carbs, proteins, fats. Which of these nutrients do you think your brain really prefers? Carbs. Carbs. Really carbs. So those of you who are on the high protein, no carb diet, just, just a reminder that your brain really likes to function on carbs. All right, and then we need it for your body metabolism. And the thing about American metabolism is, over time, we've got a little slower, little slower metabolism, slower metabolism, and it gets harder to burn your calories. So you think about it. You know, people skip breakfast. They just say, you know, I really am trying to keep my weight under control. I'm going to skip breakfast. Then your body goes, hey, wait a minute. You forgot to feed me this morning. So I'm not going to function for you at high performance. I'm going to just tune down a little because I don't have the calories to burn. So today we tune down a little bit. And then tomorrow you skip breakfast again. And we tune down a little bit more. And we tune down. And pretty soon you're going to say, like a lot of people, I just look at that food and I gain three pounds. You know, and it's because our metabolism is so slow, we're not burning off the calories we need. So you're starting to hear some different types of teaching in weight loss right now. And Weight Watchers is one of the best. And they'll say, actually, you're not eating enough calories to lose weight. And you go, hey, wait, this is just opposite of what most people think. But you need calories to stimulate your metabolism. And so we have forgotten to do that. So hopefully I'll bring that message back again in a little while. And then you need some food for your muscle action. Which of these foods, again, proteins, carbs, and fat, do you think most of your muscles need all the time? Protein. What was that? Protein. Not protein. 
It's the cards. Have you heard about the athletes who carve load? Okay, those that's based on scientific fact that the that your muscles need carbs to function. Now, all the time, every type of activity you do, you need carbs. Yes, some activities will need fat, and some activities will need some protein. But all activities need carbs. Okay, so which is really something that we should get get back to some of our fundamentals. Okay, we need carbs. So carb is not the bad guy in any sense, but we have made it out to be the bad guy, okay? Diabetes is on the rise, so people are scared of carbs, but even our diabetics, when we do you know, our, our uh, counseling with our diabetics, we allow them to eat carbs. And they go, oh no, 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 I don't wanna eat any of that, I don't wanna eat that. Oh no, it's allowed, and it's a whole new way of thinking. Okay, so. We need food for calories, but we have to have the right calories. Okay, so we also need our food to provide us with vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. These are chemicals that come from our plant foods that we haven't really, we're not even really sure what, the, what their good function is, but we're already sensing they have good functions. So we don't want to just say, oh, there's only 12 B vitamins, or you know, uh, we only have so many minerals there's going to be a lot of nutrients that we haven't really figured out what they're good for yet. Okay, so a lot of phytochemicals. We need to focus a little bit on fiber. Um, we're not eating enough fiber, but thank you back there for giving us some really good high fiber, high nutrition, very colorful foods uh, to eat. We need plenty of water. So tell me, how much water should you consume in a day? Okay, people are saying eight because you heard it. Now let me ask you another question. Yesterday, how many glasses did you drink? <laughs> okay, I heard three, I heard two. That's pretty far from eight. Okay, so even though you learned or heard it should be eight, but in reality it's two and three. So you might say, I'm pretty healthy. And then you go, oh wait a minute, she just told me I'll only drink two and three out of eight. Maybe I'm not so healthy. Okay, so we're going to be talking about many of these things. And one thing I want to point out is that even though we used to worry about growth and maintenance, now we worry about immunity. Did you know some of the latest uh, research on diabetes is that the trigger may be inflammation, which means it's an immunity issue that triggers the diabetes. So we're finding out a lot more about immunity that we don't really uh, wish we didn't know about, but it is triggering a lot of our current chronic conditions. All right. so. If you let your nutrition get out of, out of control, whether you have a weight problem or not, we are at risk for these diseases. Now, which is the top problem in the United States? Heart disease, that's number one. What's number two? <coughs> I don't think I heard it yet. Okay, it's cancer, it's number two. Number three, blood pressure, okay, and stroke. And then number five is diabetes. Now, that's in the top five. Diabetes used to not even be in the top 10 when I first started. Mm -hmm. So diabetes may be the fastest growing chronic condition in, in, our, uh, in the United States today. It's really fast growing. How young are we seeing diabetics? Children. Children, how young? Not in infants. This is a type two diabetes. Okay. Kindergarten. We have to teach our teachers and our nurses now how to deal with children coming in uh, with type 2 diabetes in kindergarten. Now you think about it, that's age five, we want them to live at least till 75, that's 70 years of medication these kids are gonna be on. This seems like a very sad thing to see children uh, have to spend the next 70 years taking medication for a condition that we consider preventable. Okay, so uh, we are really quite concerned about these conditions, but good nutrition, it goes a long way. Now, look at this, it says lifestyle choices. These are the things that you can change. This doesn't have a red, okay. So lifestyle changes, the things that you can change contribute to 71, 70, 82, 91% of the reasons why people have these conditions, and therefore, like with the diabetes, you can turn it around. So take my friend Howard. Okay, he comes to the West LA Week program and he's over 400 pounds. How much weight does Howard need to lose to get rid of his diabetes and be healthy? 200 pounds, anybody else? Go on once, go ahead. Okay, 10%. Okay, my friend here, what's your name? 
And she says 10%, and that is absolutely right. And how much weight would that be? 40 pounds. And you know what? I just, I just thought I'd just reward Anne for the cutting board for getting a good answer. All right. So, um, I don't have a lot. <laughs> okay, so 10%, which is how much, Anne? 40 pounds. So, Howard is how much weight? 400. That means when he gets to 360, his diabetes may be here. Okay? So we're, we're really looking at weight in a whole different way. We're looking at treatment of our diseases in a whole different way. A whole different way. So diabetes, he doesn't have to lose the 200 pounds. Okay? You might want him to lose 200 pounds. You know, somebody yesterday told me, how about 300 pounds? I go, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to that extreme. But, uh, you know, if we can get him to 40 pounds, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, he may not have to take medication for diabetes. And this is what we're talking about lifestyle. Now, let's take another look. You can save 11 and a half years by not smoking, okay? That's, your, that's at least three to five years that you save right off. Eating a good breakfast. Oh, wow, didn't we just sort of allude to some of that um, a little while ago? About getting your metabolism going. Burning up some of those extra calories because you've got the whole system revved up and, and using up calories, your brain's functioning better, your muscles are functioning better. The idea is that by eating a regular breakfast, it doesn't have to be a Denny's Grand Slam. In fact, that's probably not recommended. But, you know, it doesn't have to be that much. Just a regular, small amount with some carbs in it. Okay? All right. Regular aerobic exercise, okay, you have a nice gym, you should take advantage. I saw all those signs for kayaking, and I'm going, oh, I want to be here, I want to do this. Uh, it doesn't have to be that vigorous, because actually, I'm not an exercise person. So, 15 minutes a day walking, at my pace, it would probably be still really good for me. So, as long as it's regular, it doesn't have to be really, you know, until you're sweating, and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you park here and walk all the way across campus and come back for your car, you have done a really good day's <laughs> amount of moderate exercise. And you go, no way, I'm not walking across <laughs> campus. Okay, uh, weight in a desirable range, but I just told you, Howard doesn't have to be 200 pounds lighter than he is today. He can be 100 pounds lighter, he can be 40 pounds lighter, and we're gonna see some health changes already. So we want, them to be in a desirable range for health. Okay, um, I don't expect you to stop drinking, but you know, if you're excessive and binging, then we don't want that. Small amount is considered healthy. Seven, oh, this is a tough one. How many of you get seven to eight hours of sleep a night? Oh my gosh, it must be because you're young. All right, but at, at free of worry. So I have I've actually talked to a lot of groups recently None of them are getting seven to eight hours of sleep. So when I talk to the restaurant workers, LA Hotel and restaurant workers, or I'm talking about people who work at Dodger Stadium, they're seasonal workers. They're worried all the time about something or another. People who are worried are not getting seven to eight hours of sleep. So I just want to let you know that first four hours that you sleep is really important. You go into a really deep sleep. There's two things that happen there. One, you're putting away your, your memories. Things that you did, you're going to store it away, put it into storage. And people who get less than four hours of sleep are going, gee, I know I did that yesterday, I forgot what it was. Oh, I'm always so forgetful, I remember my keys up. You know, if you don't put things into long-term storage, you're going to be more forgetful. So the first four hours, one thing you're going to do, you're going to put some thoughts into long-term storage so you'll remember them better. Two, you're going to heal your body a lot during those four hours. But that's generally not good enough. So you go into really deep sleep for four hours, you come up a little bit, you do another deep dive, not as deep, but do another deep dive for two hours. So if you're doing less than six hours, try to find out what's preventing you from getting at least six hours of sleep. So if you're at seven, eight, good for you. If you're at 13, something's wrong, okay? But if you're less than six, Try to find out, is it that cell phone that you always keep next to your ear and it beams every time an email comes in? Uh, is it the lights that are on? Is it your pet that jumps up on your bed all the time? Is it the other person in the bed you have to get rid of? Okay, so whatever it is, you're aiming to get more than six hours of sleep. So if you were able to do some of these things, you could live longer. These are lifestyle habits, okay? All right, 
If we're looking at carbs, today I want to emphasize getting carbs that have some fiber in them. Okay? Now, fiber is good, it doesn't give you calories, but it does help to clean your digestive tract and keep things moving regularly. And with so many di digestive problems that we're studying and that we're treating today, I'm thinking, gee, I wonder if they had started out earlier having a better diet, would it take away some of the problems they're dealing with today, okay? So, um, whole grains. You see here, this is a typical whole grain. It has a brown outside, white on the inside, and then there's this yellow part down here I call the germ. And the reason why we process our grains is to get rid of the germ. Not that it's bad, but it's high in fat, and you can't store it very long because it will go rancid. So for, for practical reasons, they rub the grains, knock off the hull, you know, the bran part, then knock off the germ part, and then they store the white part so it can store longer. Okay, so there's a real practical reason for this, okay? So when you look at your rice, it'll look like this, and then you'll have a funny break at the bottom and then it goes back up. That's where the germ was, okay? Now, the problem with getting rid of that bran, you just deleted 98% of your thiamine, 93% of your niacin, riboflavin, 88% of your niacin. Now, does that sound good to you? Those are your three main B vitamins, and so you have just lost a great deal of nutrition and whatever else you've lost, you're probably not going to put back. So we enrich our, our grains or fortify some of our products. We try to put back what we think is lost, but you'll never put back all those other phytochemicals that we don't even know what they're good for yet. So if you can eat some whole grains, you're ahead of the game. And I'm not saying you have to convert totally to whole grains. Okay, we recommend six servings a, uh, a day. But try to meet me halfway. Let's go for three, all right? Okay, so here's some whole grains here. Maybe you can pick out of this, uh, you know, list something that you're willing to eat. By the way, who knows how to pronounce number three? Oh, oh you guys are so educated. I, I always stump people with like, uh, you know, so it's, uh, but that's quinoa, so that means you probably had it. Was it on the menu today? Okay, and these are the things that have a lot of processing and convenience foods uh, and so on. And by the way, Whole Food Day next Thursday. Did you hear that yet? Yeah. All right, so I'm hoping you all signed up and you'll remember to do it. Whole day, no convenience food, no processed food. You know, go out on Wednesday and Tuesday and buy all the fresh things you can. Stock up so you have plenty of choices for Thursday. Okay, that'd be really wonderful. Okay, now, at least three servings of whole grains a day. So for breakfast, what can you do? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Okay, brown cereal, all right. Lunch. Quinoa salad. Quinoa salad. <laughs> whole grain bread. Okay, now, a lot of people go, uh, you know, they don't want to eat whole grain. And so I'm just asking you, meet me halfway. So when you try to serve your kids and they go, oh, mom, you know, it's got, it's got, it's got all sorts of hair in this thing. You know, it's hard to chew and they start complaining. So what you do is you take a piece of white bread down, you make your sandwich, take a piece of whole grain on top, you've gone halfway. <laughs> all right, all right, most of you eat rice. I see a lot of Asians here. So it's one scoop of white, one scoop of brown. You're halfway there. Okay, so th that's how easy it is. Look for half, look for half. At least three times a day, you're going great. So we don't expect you to get there all of a sudden. People who go crazy and go, oh yeah, I read on the label this has eight grams of fiber in it. They eat one bowl of cereal and they're in the bathroom for the next hour. Okay, so if you're not used to it, it's gonna be a little tough on your digestive system all at once. So go halfway and you'll help yourself. Okay. Now, proteins, important. Look at all the wonderful things that it does. But it's not your first choice energy. Okay, so if you force your body to use proteins for energy, then it is not doing it its most efficient uh, uh, metabolism. All right, so it helps, uh, okay, all those good things. Uh, protein sources are high in saturated fats. That means all your animal sources. Okay, your animal sources tend to come with more saturated fats, more so than your plant sources. So you should really be a little bit more cautious about eating high fatty foods. And so red meats and processed meat, okay, no processed meats next Thursday. Um, okay, so these are ones that increase your risk of heart disease and colon cancer. So I have down here limit red meats, but if I told you what the research says, you probably couldn't do it. How limiting 
Do they really want you to limit your red meat? Anyone take a guess? How many two servings? Twice a month. Twice a month. Two servings of red meat a month. That's it. In 31 days, twice. Uh, it's just not going to work for most Americans. All right. Uh, so this is actually very difficult. So all I said was limit the red meats, and it's it's like Larry says. It's it is an everyday um, struggle sometimes, or an everyday commitment to try to uh, stay healthy. So I don't expect you to, to only eat red meats twice a month, but you want to make your way towards them. Okay. So what can you do? A little bit more chicken and turkey, fish, and eggs. Eggs are a little controversial. Okay, so I know some of you are medical. Don't probably, you probably work with cardiologists and you go, no, she's wrong. Okay, but let me tell you my thinking here. If you don't eat red meat, your saturated fats are going to be very low. And if that's true, then the eggs, which are low in saturated fat, high cholesterol, but low in saturated fat is not going to be that much of a risk for heart problems. Vegetarians actually are healthier, okay, than most other people. So if you don't eat red meats or don't eat animal foods, then the eggs are not a problem. So this idea of having three to five a week, it may be three to five a day if you really don't eat other sources of high fat foods or high saturated fat foods. Okay, so that's my, my little plug there for eggs. Okay, um, not that milk, okay. Uh, oh, so from beans on down, these are your plant products. But if you're gonna eat plant products, I wanna just tell you that Plant protein works better if you do a good complement of protein. You mix the proteins together so that they're stronger in their ability to build things in your body. And what you do is you can combine beans and soy foods with grains, nuts and lentils, plus beans and grains, nuts and seeds with soy products. Anyways, it's really easy. This side, beans. This side, grains. Put them together. Okay, so soybeans, tofu, and rice. Complete protein, okay? Uh, tortillas and beans, burrito, perfect, okay? Um, what else? Rice and beans, African American diet, okay? Works real good. Peanut butter and whole wheat bread, okay? Works fine. So parents go, hey, my kids only eat peanut butter at sandwiches all the time. I mean, it's going on for months. This is a nutritional problem for my kids. Peanut butter and grapes, full protein. Okay, so it's not a problem, not a problem. And people go, oh, I'm going to be weak if I eat this way. We have professional athletes, football players, who are total vegans. Okay, so there is not a problem. All right, so what else? Okay, healthy fats. Just remember that all fats have calories, okay? So if you're eating omega-3 capsules, you know, you can go to Costco, have you looked at it? How many are you supposed to eat? These big capsules. Three at a time, three times a day. Nine of these big capsules, okay? It's like drinking oil, right? Okay, so nine. There are full calories, so just remember, don't inadvertently. And when you, when you're looking for oils, people ask me, should I be eating the extra virgin or should I be doing the extra light? What's the difference? Virgin is less processed. Which one? The virgin. The extra virgin is less processed. That's true. What else is the difference? With first press versus very filtered. Okay. What else is different? How many of you cook with extra virgin olive oil? Okay. This is the lower smoke, uh, this is the higher smoking point, okay? So that means you can put a lot of heat in this one, it won't burn. This one will burn at a lower temperature. You know, you, you don't want your oils to burn, it changes into alien oils. Okay, so it's actually not good to eat oils that have been burned. So this is good for dipping, salad dressings, and so on. This is better for, for cooking. But if you're Asian and you do wok cooking, this might still burn. So that's why the canola oils, the peanut oils, the corn oils are preferred by those who use very high heat. Okay, so that's the difference in those oils. Now, omega-3 oils, they're important for immunity, but only if you have immune problems. So people are, you know, and I'm going, you got lupus? You got rheumatoid? You got, no? Oh, okay. You know, what can I say? You know, people are just, you know, they're supporting the industry by buying all these things and eating them. 
when they really don't have necessarily a reason for it. So if you don't have a reason for it, enjoy the fish instead. Enjoy your walnuts and flax seeds and eat the, the real foods, you know, the real foods. So instead of uh, taking a lot of supplements. Okay. Uh, saturated fats and trans fats. Yes? I was wondering, do you think that canned tuna is just as healthy as it? Do you still get the benefits? Um, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, tuna by itself, you know, there's still issues of mercury, although it's much less than it used to be. Um, and I, I would say that if there's no other fish that you like, then that's okay. You eat the tuna. Um, but the fresh ones, even the fresh one, depending on where you buy it, it might have a different level of omega-3 <coughs> too. So that's why it's yes and no. And the fresh ones, there's some controversy about farm versus wild caught. Uh, so I think that, you know, all things in moderation, if there's no other fish you like, tuna, tuna fish sandwich is still fine, you know, a couple times a week. Okay. All right, now the trans fats. Do we, you know, you, when you go to the market, you will find that there's olive oil margarine, that there's corn margarine, there is safflower margarine. Do we grow margarine? <laughs> okay, so how do we get the margarine? It's processed, it's manufactured. And in that process of taking something that's very fluid and making it solid, we inadvertently create trans fats. Trans fats are something your body can't break down through this beta process. You know, it just doesn't break down. And so it tends to accumulate. Even very small amounts of trans fats accumulate. And unfortunately, sometimes it gets stuck in our heart, our heart arteries, and then we end up with heart disease. And so because a small amount is very dangerous, there are places like New York City that bans trans fats from all their foods, which is quite a bold thing to do. Uh, okay, but here in California, we're really into, you know, health and such, but we didn't ban it. We just said it has to be on the food labels. It's your choice whether or not you want to eat the trans fats. So I'm telling you, look on your food labels and try not to eat anything with trans fats in them because it's just not easy for you to figure out a way to get rid of it. So it's mostly from manufactured foods, okay? So from snack foods that use shortening uh, uh, and margarine, these are the things that you would find a lot of trans Okay, so be a little careful about that. It's not good for you. Anything with partially hydrogenated shortening, that's where your manufactured fats are. Okay, now saturated fats. These are your solid fats. So you can look at it and see that they're saturated. You take a nice piece of meat and there's like a one inch fat around it. Uh, you know, I tell my butcher when I, when I was catering, uh, I would say, okay, I want a whole standing rib roast. I want you to trim the fat and I want you to take this fat out. They go, no, you need at least an inch on top so it's tasty. And I go, no, I'm not going to feed that to my people. So, uh, you know, you can have them trim it and you just learn to cook it a little bit differently so that you know, your meat is still tender. And then in the end, because when you cut that slice of prime rib and you put it on the plate, are people going to sit there, most of them, and cut out all the fat and move it away? Okay, we say yes. <laughs> not, not what I would see. They'll, they'll just slice it and they'll eat it because the seasoning is on top. So um, I think that that's just tempting people to eat more fat. So if you can get eat things that are leaner right from the beginning, it will just be safer because most of us don't have the willpower to cut out the fat. Okay, so when you eat ribs, you know, people aren't going to say, oh, I have to cut away all the fat, you know, then there's no ribs left. Um, okay, so you want to take away the saturated fats as much as possible, and that will lower your risk for heart disease. Okay, so that's important. All right, so why do I mention even about milk? A lot of you don't drink milk anymore, but we need the calcium. Calcium is good for your blood pressure, good for your bones, and, um, you know, women in here, it's really subtle that you lose the bone. I mean, I lost an inch and a half already. I used to be so tall, okay? And, and um, you know, I was minus one and a half on this hip, minus two on this hip, minus two on my knees. And I still think of myself as very active in my 60s, but hey, it's gone already, and I didn't even know it. So you want to try to keep up your calcium, but maybe you need it from your tofu, black beans, almonds, cheese, walnut, um, uh, your yogurts, even orange juice has some calcium in it, but look at those nice green things in the back. All right, it is also high in calcium. So look for some good sources. Um, and we need vitamin D, but it's so hard to get vitamin D. I recommend California, 15 to 20 minutes of sunlight. 
All right, so uh, you do not have to, this fella here, which means Alex. Alex doesn't have to go out and tear off his clothes and go, I need 15, 20 minutes of sunlight. Okay, he doesn't need to do that. Face and arms. Okay, so uh, 20 minutes, walk back to your office. It's good enough. And you get your 20 minutes of exercise. All right, now, here's your water. But we don't have to have just water. I see people carrying around big jugs of water. It doesn't have to be just straight water. It's the best, but you can have count the soups, the teas, the coffees, the milks, and the juices. So if you do that, you might come up to six. A lot of you do not come up to eight, but, um, but the recommendation is eight. Okay, it doesn't have to be just plain water. It could be any sort of fluid. This is good for your kidneys. So again, if you're Asian, if you hang out on my side of town, East LA, Monterey Park, Montebello, those hospitals are filled with people, especially Asians, with kidney problems, okay? They don't like to drink water. So trying to change the culture has been really difficult. So, but with you, if the water is not a problem, try to include more water in your diet, okay? And it can be in different forms. All right, now. Let me tell you something. Animals in, in nature are attracted to very colorful things. Colorful leaves, berries, because that's where a lot of nutrition is. So tell me, what has man done? <laughs> okay, so you're attracted to the ketchup? Okay, I'm glad. All right, there's a little bit of tomato in there. But, but you know what? I did a pediatric uh, obesity program in Echo Park, and for weeks, they do not eat any vegetable food at all. And this is the typical culture of the people I was working with. They do not eat fruits and vegetables. So this is a perfect diet. This is what they eat. All right. So we are missing right away fruits and vegetables. So in front of you, you have a fast food guy. And you know, I don't particularly hate any one of these guys in there, but I'm going to ask you to turn to page four to Carl's Jr. Okay. And I want you to look at the uh, $6 burger. Okay, tell me how many calories are in the $6 burger. Oh man, it's 1,010. For those of you on low metabolism, that's your whole day's work, okay? All right, now tell me how much fat is in this hamburger. Okay, you can get this information anytime. They have to make it available to you if you want nutrition information. But they are counting on you not knowing what 68 grams of fat look like. Okay, we got chemistry majors in here? Okay. All right, so I have here some fat, because I was a chemistry major. So I have these tubes. So um, I have a tall one here, big one, medium one, small one. So I'm asking you, what's the 68 gram foot pipe? The big one, the medium one, the little one, or do you think it's a combination? Okay, how many of you say it's the little one? How many say it's a medium one? How many say it's a big one? I mean, say it's a combination of these. Okay, let's see here. 68. Can you see that? Oh, it's a combination of the big one and the little one. Okay, so to reinforce this, I'm gonna put this in your hands, okay? So you're gonna see what 68 grams of fat look like and you go, oh my gosh, would I choose to put that in, in my foods? Okay? So this is just sort of a wake-up call because most of you don't know what 68 grams of fat looks like and you're going to see this coming around and you go, you're right, I would never choose to go throw it in my fry pan and then cook up a hamburger and then eat it all. This is the amount that's in the cooked hamburger, not in the raw. All right? So how much sodium salt is in this hamburger? 1980. So my next question is, which amount is this? Okay, this really little one down here, this is the amount your body needs every day. This big one over here is the amount most Americans eat every day. Okay, so then the question is, is it the second one or the third one is the 1980? How, say, how many people say number two? How many people say number three? Okay, you're right, it's number three. Okay, so this is the amount you need this is the amount that is at one hamburger. It is also the same amount that's in uh, a package of ramen. And you know that tastes salty. Ramen. Okay. How much do you need? Okay. So if you have high blood pressure, 
you should not be eating any more than this amount. So this hamburger already has more salt than a person with high blood pressure should have. So again, I'm going to pass this around because again, I want you to think about how much you would put in your hand and go into your fry pan when you cook something. You normally wouldn't even put this amount in, but think about how much is in our processed foods. Okay. All right. And so you can, you know, have fun with this fast food guide. You're going to see lots of fat, lots of sodium. Okay. Look at this. This one has the Jack in the Box. It has 71 grams of fat in the ultimate cheeseburger. All right. But, you know, you, you always suspected that in and out probably had a healthier hamburger. So I listed here hamburger and protein stuff. The calories are much less. You can even eat two or three before you catch up with the other one. And look at the amount of fat, so much lower, sodium so much lower. But before you go, oh yeah, I'm going to in and out from now on, and I'm going to order a double-double french fries and a chocolate shake. So let me show, so show you what happens here. It is a matter of choice, okay? So if you chose incorrectly, you could still end up way beyond what your body could, sh could or should handle for the day. So if you did this, no more walking 15, 20 minutes. You've got two hours of running on the okay, to get rid of this. And the fat is more than a day's worth, okay? On all the RDIs, that's more than a day's worth of fat. And that is definitely more salt than most of us can handle to keep our blood pressure healthy. So, you know, depending on what we choose, it could be healthier or it could be not healthy. The thing is, at home, you normally don't abuse your system like this. You don't put that much fat, you don't put that much salt in. So, not that I don't want you to go to fast food places, but think about it. Can you find healthier choices? So, circle, highlight, use this book. It's yours to keep, okay? Now, here's, here's my $6 burger. And I'm going to tell you about my husband. He's got something called metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes. Okay, he's got all three. And had I known, I probably wouldn't have married him. I thought, I'm not a defective guy here. You know? So anyways, uh, if he goes here, he cannot eat half this hamburger because the fat is too high. If he goes here, he can't eat three quarters of it because the sodium is too high for him. So if we go to In-N-Out and he orders this, can he cut his hamburger into fourths, eat only one fourth, and take the rest home? He's 6'1 uh, and about 210 pounds. No. It's not going to work. So fortunately, my kids are so bright, they go, Dad, we don't really want to go there today. OK, that's good, because if I said it, he'd get mad at me. <laughs> because the wife can't tell the husband what to do. But the kids can say, we don't want to go there. So fortunately, that's good. But there's the reality of it. When you go out to eat, you're going to end up with more fat than maybe you need, more salt than you need. And so you have to just be more careful. This should not be a regular thing going out to fast foods to eat. All right. You go, oh, look at that looks pretty. That's true. It is very pretty. Look at this. This is the amount of calories, fat, sodium. And this is probably what you would do at home if you ate at home. So my husband, now that he's retired, he cooks for me. What a, what a relief. I don't have to cook. But he, he knows what I have to eat. And so he makes lots of food so that the kids can pack for lunches the next day. So it's perfect. Okay? All right. So I just want to give you some uh, suggestions here. The small step. Did you know that if you cut out 100 calories a day, you could possibly lose 10 pounds in a year or at least keep yourself from gaining weight? Just 100 calories a day. So if you're a Starbucks person, and you go on, you get your coffee with the cream and the sugar and everything. You know, just cut out and go to a plain coffee or a coffee with a lot less sugar, a lot less cream, and you could cut out 100 calories a day. The other thing you could do is add 30 minutes of exercise. That could result in 10 pounds a year. So as we get older, it is harder for us to maintain our weight. So anything will help. Small step, a little cut back on calories, but not drastic, not like skipping meals, adding a little bit of exercise. Okay, so, and by the way, you're worth it. So, here's another thing. You also have an eat well, be well guide. The picture is the one on the last page. Okay. Did the salt get it out? Did it go this way? This is an eat well guide. And, um, hey, Alex is right in front of me, so Alex, I'm going to just become good. Okay, so Alex, here's your plate. 
And here's some food here. Could you fill your plate for me the way you would probably eat some of this food? This is fish, chicken. Um, it is possible that it's not enough food. All right, but just go ahead and make me a plate for yourself. Uh, let, let's say it's mashed potatoes. Okay. Got the chicken, he's got the pizza, brown rice, orange. <laughs> orange. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, uh, if, if you could have watched Alex, and I'm sorry I didn't pick on Alex, but um, the first thing he did was he picked up me, his entree, and he put it in the biggest section of the, of the plate. This is really typical, what people do. They pick up the meat first, and they put it in the biggest section, all right? And then he put some rice, he put some vegetables, and he put an orange. Now, what does this thing say here? It says here that you want to put half of your plate as fruit and vegetable, a quarter of it meat, and a quarter of it grain. So actually, Alex is not far wrong here, because if I turn the plate this way, his orange and his peas make up half the plate. Brown rice a quarter and his chicken a quarter. Okay, so this is the way to eat without having to count calories, grams, or exchanges. This is a way to get our heart patients to eat, our diabetics to eat, and our weight loss patients because it's so much easier to get more nutrition this way. Okay, so if he didn't eat the um, orange, he could have two vegetables, so it's a little easier to see. Now, we use this type of plate because we want to help our children and our adults to learn how to eat this way. So we say, don't put your meat in the big section. Fill it up with vegetables, salad, green things, colorful foods. Put it here. Then a quarter grain. Then you pick up your, your uh, protein, whether it's fish or something, you put it in a, another quarter. All right, now, Alex has already told me that this is not enough food. Okay, the poor Alex, he has to lose 40 pounds. All right, not, I'm only kidding. But, <laughs> yeah, he, he wants to lose some weight. And he says he's still hungry. So what do I do? What do I do when he wants to eat more? More salad? More vegetables? More liquids? Water? Okay, this is not Alex now. This is Alex's future son. Okay, so Junior wants second. And you tell him, okay, you can have more salad, more vegetables, more water. <laughs> and he's going, this is a prison dog. <laughs> okay? So let's be realistic. Okay? Let's be realistic. He wants to eat seconds. What are we going to do? Tell him to go to bed. <laughs> Very cruel. You can have seconds, but okay. less. Okay, a little bit less, a little bit less. Eat slowly. 10 to 20 minutes before you digest and let some of that go to the brain, and the brain goes, okay, uh, I'm not quite so hungry anymore. So that's a good thing. Delay a little bit. Um, okay, for these, do you really need seconds? That is a question we don't ask, but we have to teach our children. Do you really need seconds? Can you wait a little bit? Okay, drink water, yes, delay a little bit. Distract, do something else. But if you're going to eat, you balance the second plate in the same proportion. So Alex Jr. is going to want to eat some more, and you know, but you're thinking, let's just go ahead and give him a little bit more, and then if he wants more after that, you know, but we're not going to give him a full size. So it might be half the fish, it might be half the amount of peas, half the amount of greens, half the amount of of uh, brown rice or mashed potatoes, but half the amount. And then you have them eat slowly. You wait another 10, 20 minutes, and Alex Jr. goes, I'm still hungry. And then you give them less each time, but in proportion, so you don't have to worry about the nutritional value. And if you eat this way and you start to pick up some habits, pretty soon they don't really need the thirds, okay? Because you're not withholding from them. You're helping them to figure out some self-management. And we find that people will self-regulate if they're given the opportunity to do so. But you just help them along. So we buy plates like this for our kids, and we go, oh, you know, I'll go buy a plate like a dollar store. <laughs> okay, very easy to do. So, um, and
and sometimes what we do is we just buy plain clear plates and on the back side we just use a permanent marker and divide it and so that when they use the plate they just put food in the section so that they don't overdo it. And people go, oh yeah, what if I pile it really high in one section? <laughs> no, it's only up to this level. I have a top that cuts it off. <laughs> okay, so um, I encourage you, try to eat this way. Um, because it's very easy to pick up a lot of nutrition. And that's what we want to do, eat nutritiously without the extra calories. And I'm almost done, okay? Oh, this is important. All right, so um, all the sugar at the end. I'm going to give you this amount of unsweetened iced tea. How much sugar would you put in here? She put two, I don't know what you put. How many would you put in? Oh, she doesn't put sugar in. Don't put sugar in. How much sugar? No sugar. Okay, so they're very conscientious here. Okay, so you would put two, two, two. Okay, I have people who are willing to put eight. Okay, for iced tea. But count how much is in your. Um, I lost it. How much is in the uh, Coca Cola? Can you count? <laughs> Sixteen. So you know what? Am I going to be upset that Anne uses two, or her friend uses two, or her other friend uses? No, because two is so much more ahead of sixteen. All right. But when, but you're so used to popping into the uh, machine and just getting what you are used to, you don't even think about how much sugar is in your foods. But if you had a choice, you would not normally put that much in there. Yes, I do see people put fifteen in there, but uh, not 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 usually. Okay, so uh, what else? And so I have a few of these afterwards. Those of you who want to see this. Okay. Flavor waters. Flavor waters. I think it's just flavor. If you like vanilla, you can buy extract. Put a couple of drops of vanilla extract in there. A couple of drops of uh, orange. Uh, so you can use the uh, flavoring to do the same thing. A lot of people use some. It's artificial, so I'm not really into the artificial flavors. Um, but hey, take some of the strawberries, crush them a little bit, or the oranges, crush them a little bit, fill it up with water, let it stand in the refrigerator overnight, and you've got the tastiest water to drink. No artificial anything in it. Okay? Yes? What about honey and agave? Okay. Um, they're, they're natural. So they're still sweet, sweet, sweet. I know, but you're not going to put 16 in there. So you'll still be ahead. Okay, so the idea is get ahead. All right, so this is a, uh, but I want to get to this one because I know you like this picture. All right, here it is. This is chili southern smokehouse bacon burger. Look at the number of calories. I didn't make this up. I didn't even make up the title. It was on the internet. You know, burger's so bad it should be illegal. Okay, look at that. More than two days worth of fat, two and a half days worth of saturated fat, almost three days worth of sodium. Okay, so I just thought you'd like to know. Uh, and then I went over to Denny's and I ordered this. I took a picture of it. And you can order your own build a burger. It's a veggie burger with patty and melted jack cheese, spinach, mushrooms, so on, so on. 540 calories. Okay, so there are choices that you can have. It's a matter of thinking about it ahead of time. Okay? All right. So, just want to let you know that, um, you know, start with a few foods you're willing to change. Okay, next Thursday is a perfect time. You know, ask Diane how to do it if you're not sure how to do it. But, you know, let's eat a whole, whole meal, okay, whole foods. Aim for small steps. Use a healthy plate. I just think that's one of the easiest things we can do now. Teach our children. Use a healthy plate. Eat less, uh, uh, you know, uh, out if you can, the fast foods, or choose better. Drink fewer sweetened beverages um, and mo motivate yourself and uh, you're worth it. Any change takes work, okay? Don't think it's just going to come naturally. You have to put some effort into it and remember you're worth it, okay? So uh, we have different um, things available at Kaiser to help you be well. And as you go out and turn in your evaluation, we have a little gift for you that has a phone number on there that if you're a Kaiser member, you can call and talk to somebody for health coaching right over the phone, okay? So be well.
Be well. Let's try. Okay.